Yo, what up, boys? How's it going, dogs? Hey, yo. Shit. Lads. Steve not Steve's not gonna say nothing. Steve's oh no, I, I I I wasn't sure if you were addressing us or the the audience. Oh no, I'm addressing not. you. I don't talk to the audience. There's an audience. This isn't going up anywhere. Like this is just I'm I'm doing this for fun. Uh, but sup, uh, uh, friends. Uh, we're gonna do the podcast. Uh, first off, let's just do quick intros. Jay, you've been on before, but. Reintroduce yourself. Hey, uh, I'm Jay, or known as Jay Perrier. Uh, I'm a writer and also known as uh, someone's editor. That's right. And now we have our new guest. Uh, introduce yourself, sir. Hi, I'm Steve Yurko, otherwise known as Steve Yurko, all one word. Um, I am a storyboard artist for TV animation. I'm a podcaster, and I, I really like One Piece. I should just state that. Do you? No, One Piece sucks. Now what? Now go ahead and tell us the name of that podcast you're on, or one of the, or some of the ones you're on. Yeah. I know you do it all the time. And uh, what, what shows have you worked on? Uh, the the podcast I've been doing, uh, surprise surprise, the One Piece podcast. Uh, I've been doing that for almost twelve years now. <laughs> and wow. I'd heard of it if yeah, you're a One maybe. Piece fan. Also, it's it, it's good to cover a series that has showed no signs of stopping just yet. Um, yeah, uh, I'm also like a bit of a wrestling fan, so I do another podcast called Tune Sweet. But instead of just talking about uh, what happens in wrestling, we just talk about the entrance music instead. So, oh, that's that's a that's a great pitch, actually. It's something okay. something different. Uh, and yeah, yeah. shows I've worked on: I am a storyboard artist on Rick and Morty. I have also worked on shows like Robot Chicken, uh, Duncanville, and. Uh, and Super Mansion. If you ever saw Super Mansion, I worked on that. Which one was Super Mansion? It's a stop motion show that uh, that the yeah you know, the people that worked on Robot Chicken did for like Sony's Crackle. Oh, so, okay. What's, Sony, what's Sony's Crackle? Yes, uh, you don't know what Sony's <laughs> Crackle is. The ever is so that a, was that another video site? Oh yeah, it's it streaming yeah, service. One of the most popular. <laughs> <laughs> is it still is it still going? I think so. It's like one of those ones where it's kind of, it's like it's freemium. I thought they were going to like candy bars or something. Like I know it, Hershey's Crackle. Crackle as opposed to the other <laughs> streaming site uh, Crunch. What the fuck? I'm sorry. No, no, not the not the just. But what the fuck is crack? Okay, Crackle, owned by Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment. Got it. That's what I think of when I think of streaming sites. Anyway, if you have Crackle, is Super Mansion still on there. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> then then wa- then watch Super Mansion on sure. Crackle if you have Crackle. Uh, but also, you know, go listen to his podcast. Go watch all that shit. But let's forget all that now. I, I asked Twitter for some uh, topics, and uh, we got some good ones. Uh, Steve, you want to pick one out to start? Uh, sure. I mean, what's a good one? Did, how about this one from uh, Jen the Genius? Uh, I think okay. it's... This is a good roundtable one. How would your younger selves react uh, with where you are now? Oh, oh boy, that's interesting. Um, so I guess what could be fun is how young are we? Like, what what age? I think that would, that that'll depend. That my answer will change depending on that. I mean, I'm sure five year old me would be disappointed that I'm not a Power Ranger. Um... Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's like that, right? Five year old me is like. Oh, like okay. What's YouTube? No, so it's like, <laughs> uh, what's? <laughs> is it like uh, what channel is that on? Me, elementary school me. I was envisioning teenage me because I think I by think then... let's let's go let's go teenage. I think that's a good <laughs> that's a good one. So, uh, cool. Why don't we start with any of you want? Either of you guys want to start? Jay. Uh, Jay. Sure. Okay. Um. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out uh, my own path, as we all are, as we're continually striving mm-hmm. to find more and more opportunities. Um, and uh, for those of you who are not familiar with my body of work, uh, I've uh, sold a couple of uh, shows uh, here and there, some to Nickelodeon. I, I was a writing consultant for certain uh, projects here and there, but nothing that like super took off. Um, mm. But I'm sure high school me would be super proud of like oh my goodness like 
you know, you got to have all these meetings with like DreamWorks and Nickelodeon and and whatnot. Mm. Um, and you're getting to work on a your your comic project that you've been writing since high school. <laughs> like it's actually happening. Oh, uh, I'm, that's cool. Yeah, I, I successfully. Uh, uh, Pit, just plug it. Plug oh, it. God. What's it called? Yeah, uh, uh, Bounty Light uh, is a comic that I've been writing actually since like freshman year of high school. Uh, uh, Hell yeah. And so like over a decade now and uh, it was, I did crowdfunding on Kickstarter last year that was successfully funded and uh, yeah, I've been working on it with a really cool team um, that we are. Can people still order the book um, like through the Kickstarter? Not at the moment because, uh, 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 but we are going to have like more uh like more a, a surplus uh, so that we can start distributing after the Kickstarter uh, rewards gotcha. are sent out, uh, which will be uh, projected either summer or fall 2021. So stay tuned. Which <laughs> might be when this episode comes oh, out. Oh, for so real? We'll see. That actually happened, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll wow, see. You're really, you're really we'll far see. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we go. F- yeah, we record pretty far uh, in advance. So uh, we'll see. We'll see if Jay was a liar or not. Oh, God. Uh, oh, God. By that time. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I'm, enjo- I'm enjoying this so- warm summer weather <laughs> <laughs> right now. Exactly. Ooh. Ooh. Scorch- it sure scorcher is today. Prob- probably maybe summer. Uh, yeah, like, oh, don't worry about it. I don't give a shit. Uh, so. Now, let me ask you, Jay, when you were in, well, I mean, you obviously you were writing this comic. Where did you envision yourself as, I want to be a writer when I grow up? No, uh, like, I actually, people, people, when they ask me like, oh, hey, do you, uh, what made you want to be a writer? I actually studied like illustration and fine arts for a majority of my mm-hmm. life. Uh, and then senior okay. year of high school when it was like, and I, but I also loved uh, uh, writing comics, which is why like I drew a little sure. comics in class. Um but uh, <laughs> uh, senior year of high school, when I saw that like certain uh, colleges were like, "Oh, you need like forty portfolio pieces to get in," I was like, "Fuck this! <laughs> this is this sucks." So I looked at like uh, yeah. uh, SVA 40. School of Visual Arts requirements at the time for film, and I'm like, "I like movies," and it's like, "Just write two essays." So I'm like, "Sure, okay, cool. I'll do movies now." And that's when I went in <laughs> to study uh, screenwriting. <laughs> I feel so like me. I'd rather be like, uh, "Fuck that!" I, I, I write an essay. Uh, I'll I'll do forty portfolio pieces <laughs> instead. <laughs> and that's why you both went your different paths. Yes. Now, actually, you guys you guys went to the same college, right? Yes, yeah. but I don't think our paths did, ever crossed. I did not even think about this when I had you both on at the same time, but. Yeah, yeah, that's actually very interesting that mm-hmm. you guys were at the same school. We weren't in school at the same time. Um, but mm-hmm. my first year in school uh, and my first uh, New York Comic Con, uh, I did stop by Steve's table. <laughs> do you remember Steve? I do, do not. That? I do not know. I don't, that yeah. must I don't have know been... if he was there. I don't, that's the thing. I don't remember him being there. I like. I yeah. bought stuff, but yeah. Yeah, because I remember I, the tall, bald man, if he was there or not. I think like, I would. That's like, why I was like, I don't remember like <laughs> saying hello and shaking his hand or anything. I still had a little gotcha. bit of hair. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I didn't know how, how long ago this was. It's a, well, it's been short for a while. I I, I bought um, a, uh, a, a piece that was uh, the Blackbeard Pirates doing the Ginyu Force pose. Mmm... <laughs> And what year was that when you when you uh, uh, saw? Uh, I'm guessing it's 2000. I'm guessing it's 2012. I think 2011. Wow. I think. Wow. I don't That's think it was 2011 old. because I don't think I. Oh, you didn't do that piece yet. Old. Okay, then. No, nor was was there even a New York Comic Con that year? Because I remember it used to be in February, and then they bumped it because they didn't like having a Comic Con during the winter months or maybe it was 2011 I don't know. <laughs> why don't we keep thinking about it why don't yeah, we I, keep talking for like 10 minutes what like, do you wait, think it happened on, one, <laughs> like look at it oh i'm gonna say uh 2007 it, I, in fact it was 2007 i remember this oh yes uh now i um would like to hear your answer steve uh, for the question like a young uh teenage steve in old high school Steve, what would he think of seeing you now? I, I'm not trying to blow smoke up my own ass here. I think it's more so like just point out the fact how jaded I've become. I think my teenage self would be blown away by me. He would mm. like mm. 
he'd be so amazed, and I would just be like, eh, yeah. you know, it's not, not, you know, hot, you know, it's like something to get a big head over. But mm-hmm. I, I don't know, just, I, I think just, I'm thinking the fact that I'm like still into a lot of the same things I was very passionate about when I was a teenager would probably surprise mm-hmm. my teenage self. It's like, wait, you're still talking about One Piece and Dragon Ball all the time? <laughs> it's like, yeah, you aren't. <laughs> I think just sticking with like my aspirations and just being a full-time artist I think that that was the dream and mm. and kind of just working on stuff and put myself out there I think yeah I think my teenage self would be like oh right yeah I don't have to do shit anymore it's like no 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 you gotta put the work in don't it's I don't think I don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't want time travel to mess this up. It's like no no, don't start slacking now. <laughs> this took this took years, man. Yeah, it's it's so funny. It's like, you know, oh man, if you could go back and tell yourself like, hey, things will work out. It's like, well, actually don't maybe then they'll just slack off and be like, "Oh, okay. Well, if it's if it's inevitable, then I don't have to be. It's like, no, it's because you suffered. Yeah. <laughs> you 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 suffered for like 6 years straight with no results. And that's what led to, you know, uh yeah and, you know I, I i kind of feel the same way you do steve where i think uh high school me would be like you're full of shit like, what are you, oh, i'm oh, oh, oh you got, you're, you have a success, huge youtube channel and you make money off of it youtube can't make money uh and also uh you you're voice acting uh you're, like okay like think i'm thinking back what was i playing at the time Oh, huh. Soul Calibur Six, huh? Okay, like at the, <laughs> I'm sure you're in it. Yeah, liar. Uh, I I do think he would be pretty. He would he would be very happy, I guess. But it's mm-hmm. almost like I almost wouldn't want past self to know because it's like you can't. They I think because what makes a work ethic strong is you have to be able to do it without any guarantee of success, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah. So if I told my younger self, "Hey, yeah, don't worry about it," it's like maybe I would change my own fate. <laughs> Cause, yeah, like because for if, me if, it was if, it was just pure work ethic and uh, just working towards it. But well, that just raises the most important ahead. question: if you had a chance to change your fate, would you? <laughs> <laughs> what if you? <laughs> what if Jeez, you had a feed? What if you had a uh, successful our, voice acting f- career? For our favorite Pixar film of all time. <laughs> Love dropping that one. What if no. you could become a voice actor? <laughs> well, it makes me think because you know people ask like, oh, like if you could travel into the future and and see yourself in the future, would you? And I, I kind of don't want that. I, I. No, I wouldn't no. want that at all. It's yeah. stop me if you heard this before. It's all it's it's about the journey, not not about the destination. I would go into the far future. You know what I mean? Like where I'm mm-hmm. like past where I'm definitely gonna die, right? Then I'm just like, what's that like? And if it's like, oh, the earth is scorched and black and there's no humans left, it's like, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> so but I'm dead before that. A lot, right? of per- a lot of things in perspective. <laughs> Like you would say, you you want to travel into the future just to see how the world ends? No, 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 not the, just like I don't know. Like if I can choose, I don't want to. I don't want to ever see my life's like where that's going because I want that to be a surprise, right? right? Mm-hmm. Or maybe I go like, let's go ten years and there's where am I? Uh oh, <laughs> like something happened. I must have not made it this far. It's a lot uh, like it's, it's a lot like Christmas. Like I don't want to know what I'm getting. It's like all yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You want it to be a surprise, so mm-hmm. but. Listen, I'm not going to, unless we can, like, put our brains into, and who knows, maybe we will get, maybe, maybe we're in that time where when we're 80, they'll develop the technology and we'll put, uh, fucking our brains in robots or something, which first off, hell the yeah. question, uh, <laughs> would, would, would you do it? Yeah, dude. Okay, it's Jay says, hell yeah. Steve, would you, would you put a, your brain in a robot to live basically forever? I mean, living the same life? No. Uh, like if I was a cyborg and then got like super strength through all that, I definitely want to try new things. <laughs> Maybe mm. fighting crime. I don't know. I <laughs> but you so you would want to like a almost like a reincarnation new game plus like or just like a start a completely different person. I would okay. Want... Now we're getting we're getting to like <laughs> the, 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 our, what is self? What is consciousness? <laughs> well, well, nothing is forever. Like I wouldn't. I I don't think I'd want to live forever. 
It's mm. you gotta know well, when you your time's up. As long as the hardware allowed, I guess mm-hmm. maybe. But yes, I guess I guess your life would be extended a very long period of time. I'm kind of with Jay. <laughs> I think I probably would if it were given the option. If that were like the norm, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because I think the cur- a lot of people with the curse of immortality. It's oh, everyone else dies, but you are immortal. That would be miserable. You know, yeah. everyone you know dying. And but if it was like, hey, everybody. Everybody, oh, it's like normal, and we're all uploading ourselves into so that just the human life just naturally extends longer. Yeah, I do it. I do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Although, yeah, I guess. But then it's like, do you live forever? Like, do you like as long or? Wow, this is getting deeper than. <laughs> than, than I That's the thing. I don't. I don't. I don't want that Highlander thing. I don't want to live forever. <laughs> I don't want to see all all my loved ones fade away. And oh, then, no, 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 but in the in in this in this possibility, all your loved ones would also maybe do it. <laughs> I would just start like an underground like cyborg fighting ring or something. <laughs> <laughs> I just think oh, if you're gonna be a thing. cyborg, I, you gotta do super cool things. I like I don't want to continue to just draw storyboards for like two hundred years. <laughs> now, obviously, the technology depending on how the technology works, it would be different, but. Uh, from case to case, but let's say it's kind of like how you know there's immortality where you you could theoretically live forever, but if something happens like an accident, you die. You know what I mean? Those rules. Mm-hmm. Okay, so like it could you, be something you like can't, that. Like like you, your your body still has like human limitations. Like you still need air or oxygen and stuff, or like or let's say or let's say for robot bodies, right? Like you know you won't get sick, and you you know you're in, but. Uh, well, I won't get sick. That rules. You, Hell yeah! Like, I don't. Yeah, I hate getting yeah, sick. But, but, yeah, but let's. Uh, so I'm saying, let's say. Uh, but if you uh, blew up or something. Oh or, uh, yeah! If your plane body's crash, irreparable, then like your. If your body's irreparable, you then you will die. Sure, sure, sure. You just have like longevity, yeah. right? With your life, like like how long you live. Yeah, it, I guess. Yeah, theoretically, if as long as you're careful, you could live forever. So we can't be um, like Mister Freeze, like which is like head in a jar with spider legs. <laughs> like, oh, I mean that's a, that's. I mean we could talk about that too. Like if uh, if we want to go that route, but yeah, it's no, too it's, far, it's, it's, too far for me. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah, um, I don't want to look like the like the weird like toy that Sid constructed in Toy Story, the baby, <laughs> baby, the baby doll, head, yeah, with the spider legs. I don't want to be that. Uh, you're a coward. I absolutely <laughs> want to be that, and I want to be made with giant erector pieces, like like he is. Uh. Yeah, no, it's, um, I didn't think the conversation was going to go this way, but it is an interesting, like, thought, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, be, if, if you could upload your mind to preserve it, uh, you know. Flipping what, back, what, just, what, like, the reverse time travel thing also, like, I don't even know, like, I'm still, like, unsure about, like, if I would give my young self advice, like, avoid this, don't do this, on this day, don't go here. Because then I'm like, well, what if that really messes me up and changes who I turn out to be in the future? See, I think I think there's definitely you can't do any of that, right? I think that's just a rule of thumb of how time works. Like, if you change something, it'll change things dramatically. Unless we're talking about multiple timelines, but right? Right. Go ahead. The thing I would tell my past self then, without like like drastically changing something, like about like my personal life, is if there's an old restaurant. That I that closed down that closes down in the future. I would tell them like, hey, just eat there more often. Like, like because I'm just like, uh, I feel like there were a lot of places uh, uh, back in in New York that just like closed down due to like you know uh, just what for whatever reason. And I'm like, man, I could have really gone for you know that place is like grilled cheese with blueberry preserves. You know, like I I fucking miss that. Here's sandwich. the thing, Jay. Here's the thing. You you tell your younger self that. He goes and then he chokes on a grilled cheese sandwich and dies. What? Chokes on that what the fuck? Preserve. How does that happen? Well, I'm saying, I'm well. I'm saying that could happen. You don't know. You can't. You can't change the past, man. Don't tell your. You can't. You know. Maybe you ate the just the right amount of times there. Maybe if you had eaten there one more time, you would have choked on a sandwich and died. Or the caloric intake was too much and it and uh, it. Uh, I don't know. Or, 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 you know, you never know, man. You never know. <laughs> it's the butterfly effect. It's the grilled cheese effect. You don't <laughs> know what's going to happen. The grilled cheese effect. Well, like, Japan Maybe. has, be careful, like, don't eat mochi too fast or you'll choke mm. on it. Do we just have, don't eat that grilled cheese too fast. You'll choke on that. 
melty stringy yeah, Jay, cheese. Yeah, Jay, what if you eat you eat too many times there because you're like, oh, God, I got like I got to eat there more often. And then you start being a baby about grilled cheese like you are with fish, right? You're like, oh, no. <laughs> are we oh, really going tummy. there? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't tell this, that story last time, right? I guess not. Uh, you don't have to. Do you want to go no, into, into your No, at this point we have to, right? Like, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, that's why I brought it uh, up. So our friend Jay here has uh, has, a, has a story with old old fish. Yeah, old I, I don't eat seafood. Uh, what happened, Jay? Okay, so this is when I was uh, living in Korea. Uh, I, I was in middle school, so 12 years old, I think. Uh, some classmates and I want to go to... Uh, uh, to the island of Jeju-do on vacation. Quick fun fact about Korea as a whole. North and South combined, if you uh, shape a silhouette, it is the shape of either a stretching tiger or a rabbit. The island of Jeju-do, located southeast of the, of the bottom border of South Korea, is a really tiny dot. So if you look at it as a rabbit, it is known as the rabbit's poo. So we go to vacation at the rabbit's poo, uh, <laughs> and it, be, it being an island is like just seafood everywhere. And I used to love seafood. Um, and uh, we went to a all-you-can-eat seafood buffet. And, you know, uh, if you're Korean or have Korean friends, you must be familiar with that uh, Korean people love punishment games. Uh, a simple game of rock, paper, scissors mm. isn't just, uh-oh, I lost. It's just, oh, you lost? I get to punch you in the face or something. Uh, or you do, like, right. like 15 push-ups immediately uh, for losing. Um, so we were playing a card game. I forget. I, it might have been a Digimon Rescue. I, I lost whatever. Uh, and my two punishment choices were either uh, option A, in the motel that we were staying at, for some reason, the pool was li- like the liquid was black, pure black. And there were some hmm. unknown objects floating in it. Um, the only thing sure I reckon- not the tar pits. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. So these mysterious tar pits see, at the motel. See a f- fake mammoth in there being like, help me. <laughs> <You know. laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like the La Brea tar, t- uh, tar yeah. pits. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my option A was to swim at that, which I was like, hell no, I'm not doing that. Option B was to take everything at this buffet, uh, and uh, including like it's like all different types of fish, yellowtail, salmon, uh, crab, lobster, oyster, mollusk. I'm getting hungry. Everything, all, 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 all uh, <laughs> raw cooked, everything. A condiment sauce is included and mash it into one cup and drink that so i chose that one and I, oh you're the king of mashing things together <laughs> we're not talking about that story um <laughs> uh, and so uh we uh i obviously took that option and i kid you not for the rest of the vacation for a straight week i had explosive diarrhea and i was so dehydrated i almost had to go to the hospital uh till this day i'm a lot better now but if i'm like in the supermarket i'm passing by like the fish aisle and if i smell fish i feel like a tingle in my spine um yeah so that's my deal with fish uh what was this bash story uh i know what it is and i'm out i don't know maybe we'll get into that in a second but uh i it's yeah, this is the you know this is just gonna be the J cast where we just uh, go. Hey, how about this story, Jay? How about this story, Jay? About your life? Um, yeah, I, I tease Jay about the seafood thing. I get it. I would. I'll probably also have a re similar reaction maybe if I had to go through that. But I also wouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would. You, uh-huh. yeah, in hindsight, maybe I should have swam in the in the the tar pit. <laughs> Was was part yeah. of the deal that you had to mash it together? Yeah, it had. That was the only way. Like we, like it's not like I had to eat it individually. It was like all one cup, and they mixed it up for me. Ugh. Maybe Jay. Maybe you. Maybe if you went into that pool, that tar pit pool, you would have sunk to the bottom and died. <laughs> maybe, you, maybe, or or maybe you would have a visceral fear of swimming as opposed to uh, oh, seafood. But I love swimming. Okay. Yeah. I know, and you love seafood. You have to choose and, and, one. And, and fish, they also swim. You have a lot in common there. You got a <laughs> a lot in common. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, Jay's choice: uh, swimming or seafood. I swear, this is like sometimes I wonder if my life is like uh, a really badly designed Telltale game or a Quantic Dream game, where like the control, like the players, like you know, I heard the disaster route options are really fun for Jay, and sort of just choosing <laughs> all the wrong things. <laughs> Uh, speaking of mashing things together, uh, you want to just go in, go into that a little bit? Like, oh my god! Because we're we're referring to the same same thing, right? That like the first time I th- well, the first time I thought I met Jay, but the first time I saw Jay at a restaurant, 
right? I think this is the first time we hung out outside of a convention. Yes, that's sure. right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we were at a uh, Japanese restaurant. I forget the name of it. It was an anime expo. And, uh, Sally uh, Papa's, I think. or Right? Sally something? Yeah, yeah. they're closed now, I believe. But um, they uh, had this gigantic parfait where you could share it with a bunch of people. Uh, it had What was in that parfait? Uh, there was like pocky sticks, yeah. like a bunch of fruit. The $55 right? mega there? parfait had pocky sticks, waffle <laughs> bits, uh, uh, different flavors of ice cream scoops, like strawberry, vanilla, I believe mint was in matcha, there. Matcha. Right? Oh, matcha, matcha, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What else? There were like uh, wafers, um, like fresh strawberries. Uh, yeah, it was just like a real sugary delight. Nothing. It looked beautiful. Yeah, and uh, I was and and they it they were like, yeah, way. we'll get that. It started that way, and then uh, was it you, Mister Genius, Mister Genius, who had the idea to Look, mash it all together? The guy. So oh, you were like, oh yeah, go ahead. The 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 waiter just gave us a ladle, and I said, oh, how do we pass this over? How do we share this with everybody? And he suggested that it, it's pretty good when it's mixed together, so we could probably just dig in. So I was like, okay. We should mix it. And no one was going for it. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll take initiative. And I pulled the parfait close to me and I took the ladle and I just smushed it and mixed it together. (laughs) You know, I don't think he literally meant mix it into a sludge. I think it was like, oh, it's mixed. Oh, it's like, oh, it's, you know, it's. It's all these ingredients together. I think you just scoop some out and you'll enjoy it no matter what. Not what he did, which was, hey, I'm going to take this ladle, take this beautiful giant parfait, and turn it into a brown green sludge. It looked, it looked like, you know when every anime, there's like, oh, I'm the girl who can't cook. And they're like, uh-oh, <laughs> look at the pot. That's what it looked like. It looked like just <laughs> a brown sl- greenish sludge with sticks popping out of it. It looks like, like an okay. and Grimer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so I was like, I will be ordering my own little parfait, which was delicious. Uh, and as you guys spoon this, this yeah, and I offered to Alolan mix Grimer too. sludge <laughs> into into cups. Yeah, and that was like the first impression I had of you was this guy likes his food mashed up into nonsense. <laughs> and hey, it ties back to your to your traumatic childhood. Yeah, I didn't know there was a pattern, but oh it was a God. big table, and it's like it's not like it was in like a giant bowl or trough. It's in like a big like uh, like glass, or like like a big uh, like like a, <laughs> like, I don't know, just like a big shape. cup. Yeah, so, yeah, like... yeah. So you you can't just like dig into it. You have to go through like you have to work it from the top down, which is really hard to do. Yeah, you know how you can do that though is not mixing it all up to get into a slug. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be better uh, just to pass it around. So no, I, 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 I keep referring to the, this is the for, I thought the first time I met Jay, but we talked about this last. We time, talked right? about this last time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How Jay betrayed me. And I did no such thing. Uh, so it's just uh, a lot of int- Jay, Jay, a lot of interesting life uh, moments in Jay's uh, personal life. JRPG uh of, of his of his his telltale jrpg jay you're so lucky life. your name is jay because there's so many puns you could do it's, oh his tell jail jrpg <laughs> oh my god uh i was gonna see is there something with walking dead no uh uh what's a tell to no i can't think of anything tales i haven't played from, a tales video game the since the nintendo jam cube tales oh. from the jader the bolt the border no that doesn't work either why did you even start that oh my um, god <laughs> How do we get out? Okay, we talked about immortality. We talked about two embarrassing Jay stories, which is about right for the quota for like a typical conversation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, uh, I guess uh, who brought up the younger? Was that you, Steve, who brought the younger selves question? Yeah. Jay, your turn to pick one from the Twitter. Uh, let's see. I feel like this will uh, unleash uh, a whole. This what this might take over the whole podcast for the rest of us, but uh, that's fine. Uh, who's your favorite Straw Hat or One Piece character in general? Oh, I mean that's easy. Uh, yeah, Zoro. Zoro's mine. Uh, close is like Jinbei, but no, Zoro is like easily my favorite. How about you guys, Sanji? Really? No. 
<laughs> I guess he's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, uh, for the listeners, uh, Steve is the biggest Sanji fan. I was being uh, sarcastic. Steve I threw San- I, a literal Sanji con in his apartment. Uh, it's fun. Going through that a little bit. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what did Sanji like con entail? Well, we. Um... My friends and I, it wasn't just me doing all this, uh, but together we cooked and prepped a lot of uh, dishes from the Sanji cookbook, the literal Sanji cookbook that they uh, produce in Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, made a bunch of dishes, invited a lot of people over. I this It went a lot better than I thought it would because I was like, well, I'll just put on one piece on the TV and hopefully everyone just like just hangs out, has a good time. And I think for the most part, everyone just enjoyed being around a TV with one piece. Yeah. And just, I just remember at some point I was just like looking around the room and everyone's just talking to each other just about one piece or whatever. I was like, how the hell did this happen? Like, how the hell did this work? <laughs> um, I think it got better as the night went on. Cause everyone's just like, put on the four kids dub, put on the four kids dub. So I put I mean, on one of the highlights. I think was like, let's watch all the openings. That might have been me that, who suggested that, it. I don't know. Yeah, but. that was one of my favorites was we we put up a compilation that had every One Piece opening, which was like about like an hour long. Yeah, and it's all long. of us were sitting yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> and we were great. just sitting there enjoying them, talking about things we liked. It was like a message board, but like in my apartment. And yeah. I think we also that watched the, um, the Hungry Days uh, music video. Uh, yeah, yeah. For the high school, which is yeah. not up on the channel anymore for some bizarre reason. But oh man, I think, I think that, I, that was the same day it was released. I remember it like it was on Twitter. I'm like, oh, let's just bring this up on the TV, and it got such an emotional reaction out of everybody. Yeah, it was beautiful. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, Sanji Khan was that was fun. Like, uh, mm-hmm. I, I was gonna say, oh no, I got something else One Piece related to bring up, but we'll get back to that. Uh, Jay, uh, who's your favorite? Nami. I love Oh, Nami. really? That's yeah. awesome. Nami. I, oh, yeah. I, Nami, mm-hmm. like, uh, it, it's changed over the years. Like, I, I, I did really like Sanji a lot, uh, early One Piece, and then, uh, Whole Cake Island really helped, and I love Whole Cake Island, but, uh, <laughs> Sanji's kind of, kind of gone down a little bit, uh, mostly mm. because he's been a little repetitive. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, anytime, like, I'm always starving for, like, Nami content. So anytime Nami, like, pops off or does anything, I'm just like, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm with you scared. there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love Nami. I never hear anyone, like, appreciate Nami. Like, I, she's easily, like, top, oh, when was the last time I did this, though? I want to say she's top three for me. And I think that's pretty consistent. But I could be totally lying. But I think she's usually there for me. Um, Nami's, Nami's so good. Uh, I think she's she's gone up there for me recently, mm. like in my in just off the top of my head. If I could just think of a top five real quick, she might even broke. She might have broken the top five for me now because I think mm. she's just she's consistent and yeah, she constantly yeah. has something to do in every arc she's in. Yeah, like whether it's something big or whether something small, but I always remember it. <laughs> then and she's always funny, right? She's yes, always yeah. funny. very funny. And uh, oh man, like. <clears throat> Usopp for me went dumb, but Nami like f- keeps that role that Usopp had, and it's still great. Uh, I um, have something else One Piece related, so and, and, so to tie into what we're talking about, I'm watching One Piece with uh, you guys know Elvis. Uh, he's never seen it. We're watching it the, for the first time, basically, mm-hmm. uh, and we're doing one episode a week. Because uh, he's a baby and we'll watch more, <laughs> but you know we're right now we're actually in Arlong Park, um, oh. and we we just started the first half of the Bell Mare stuff, uh, and it's you know it's so good. Uh, but jumping off of that and uh, going tying in Sanji Khan watching openings and songs and where I'm at now. I'm sorry. I was on a thing with you guys, the One Piece podcast, like a Jeopardy thing. And I was like, the first ending sucks ass. And you guys were like, what? What are you, It's so good. What are you talking about? That first ending sequence is nothing. Uh, uh, but, but I said the song is good. Sounds funny. <laughs> the, this, I think the song is a beautiful song. The visuals are very, very lame. 
Do you even know what we're talking about, Jay? Do you remember that? I, I don't even remember like, that one. It's oh. like she's on a oh, oh, the really slow one. Silhouettes and... on an ocean. Yeah, 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 yeah. The second one rules. The second one rules. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, like and the animation it. is stellar in that. Like oh, it's amazing it's the, in that second. Animation. The way the characters are animated when they're running, and mm. some of them like Sanji does like a three sixty spin to do like a kick. That is. That's work. <laughs> yeah. It's very lovingly done. Because, you know, Dave and I, Dave's also watching it with us. And, like, we're just watching it. And, like, every time this stupid ending came in, we're like, oh, my God. Like, who? Like, this. Because we watch it every time. Uh, yeah. But it's just. I'm like, oh, my God. Just. I think it's, like, the way it starts in the TV cut can be very uh, grating. I remember when I was first watching through the anime, I was watching them on Hong Kong bootleg DVDs, because mm. uh, which was the style at the time, um, mm. <laughs> and that was the menu music. So that's the first thing you hear, uh, and I didn't like the song either because that's okay. like the, the and I'm like, oh god, why is this so loud and already like at eleven? <laughs> yeah, that's not like menu music should not be that. Sure. <laughs> Uh, so I wasn't a fan of it myself too when I was first watching the series, but now that is one of my favorite endings. I gotta say, your favorite what song song wise? If we're oh, if we're, okay. I think I should say one of my favorite ending songs. I think if you say endings, you're including the visuals too. Okay, so, okay. I'll rephrase that. Let one of my help. favorite ending songs. All right. Second part of me attacking you is you guys don't like opening twelve. Oh yeah, that was a very controversial opening. You're, you're that's a your, fool. That's your favorite, right? That's my favorite. I was talking to Dave about it, and he was like, "What? Why don't they like it? It's so good." Luffy's run through Impel Down alone. Now right. you're just talking about the visuals. You're not talking about the song. I love the song. I think it's the great. Woo, 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 yeah, the song, the song's fun. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chisana. And that's oh, your hey, like. <laughs> at least the lyrics to memories are very fitting for the story, not There You Are, My Love, Waiting for Me. When it was it's about the impel down arc with him trying to escape a prison to save his brother. Listen, the Come first on. Shut the hell up. The first half is like, <laughs> you know, it's fun, like, woo, 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 yeah. But then like, you know, it starts ramping up with like the he's going up the stairs. Boy, people who haven't seen One Piece opening 12 don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> but, like, that shit builds up. Like, you're... Just... I think I think the second half, mainly, like, with those... With the arc visuals, especially with the sequence of Luffy running and you see all the different uh, allies and yeah. held down. Yeah. That That is beautiful. I yeah. love it. Uh, yeah. I And I think the song is still catchy. Like, I will still listen to that song. But it. I think at the time... And I'm also a lot younger when this was airing like the impel down was a much more serious like oh i'm sorry you want the, you like want like what song are you are you trying to do opening 13 one day right is that what it's called <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're trying to, you want some like some emo shit some fucking boring ass emo shit is that what you want no i just want something with a little more i don't like with, with just like a little more hard edge to it not full edge <laughs> half edge <laughs> yeah, yeah. and like opening 13 i think uh captured that tone a lot more but in hindsight i don't like it as much as i like other openings i think it i think it hasn't aged as well as some others but my here's, taste here's, here's, weird, so. here's the thing what's your take on brand new world that's one of the best ones yeah, but that song is not. It's just like da 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 da. It's very cheery, upbeat. It's you know, it's super I, goofy. But also, I think that just. I, I think it just captures. I, I think it captures the energy more. And you got to think about the lyrics too. That captures the ens- essence of One Piece more. Like Kase wo Sagashite sounds like a love song. Yeah, because I love One Piece. Do you love One Piece? <laughs> <laughs> My first love is the sea. Okay. <laughs> Um, Jay, what's your favorite? Oh, I guess so. My favorite is still Kazuo Sagashita. What, what is your favorite one? Brand new world, Steve? No, uh, we are. I'm a, Which one's I'm we a, are? I'm no, a... I'm kidding. Uh, and Jay, <laughs> what's yours, Jay? It's a tie between Over the Top and uh, We Go. Hmm. Or Kitatani Boys. Good. Yeah. 
Uh, mine's a super. Oh. <laughs> 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 <That> <laughs> <laughs> I got to check my my the rankings I did a little while back. I think that might be my second to last one. What's your last? Is it Kazuo Sayashi? No, I always put the Straw Hat We Are Good, I- because it they count it as an opening and it's a fake opening. Ah, I see, I see. Okay, well, okay, disregarding that, then it's superpowers? I think so. I'm going to verify that, but mm. that's, uh That, that, if, if, if Jay churning a parfait into a brown, green, goopy <laughs> mess was a song, that would be superpowers. Oh, my God. I, th- now, the I'm curious now, I have to, I feel like I should, because, uh, like, that footage, is, uh, because they may record me doing that. So I'm wondering if I should like find that video and yeah. put it to superpowers and just see how that works. <laughs> I think you know, what you got to do is you got to take superpowers and slow it down. <laughs> it's it's just they, there's too much going on, and then like it it's it, like my co-host Ed made this observation about a lot of like current J-pop where it's just like there's no momentum built in a song. Everything just starts at an eleven. And then there's like mm. dubstep, like uh, solos, and a lot of auto tuning, and that's superpowers. Mm. Is it the same? I've it, it's I it's, a, it's I just ignore that opening. But is that the same band as a previous one? Is that am I right on that or am I wrong? They might on have that? done something for a TV special. They might have sung "We Are" or something. A lot What's the band called for that? V six. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to look it up right now. Yeah. V6? Oh, these I know them for Inuyasha openings. Uh, do you remember? Cha- uh, I want to change Wait, that's the world! Them? That's them. What the that's fuck? V- God, they fell. <laughs> that's v- V6, right? Oh. Yeah, that's that's them. That's them. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a jam. I want to change the world. Uh, or change the world. They did that and Brand New World, if you remember, if you watched Inuyasha. Um, oh, I was about to say, I'm like, wait, what? Because that's... Oh, wait, did, wait, oh, yeah. they, they, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah, all right. But yes, they are superpowers, which, when they announced V6, I was like, oh, okay, I like Change, change the World, and then I listened to that song, I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, actually, mm, no. I had I had wake up and we can lower than superpowers. Which ones really? We can we can is the Hiroshi Kitadani one for Zo. Well, he's yes, he's, uh, we can. Well, he's doing backup. Da, 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 it was da, da, da. Uh, was it Kishidan? I think. Uh, yeah, it's Kishidan. Yeah, the band that um, sung the ending to movie six. That that opening is not great considering it's Kitadani involved because I don't care about that water fight. And then there's like barely any cool visuals. Yeah, the visuals the are. Arc. I th- I think that's what pissed me off most of all was uh, was the visuals, and I think the chorus isn't even that good. Like it, 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 I feel like it barely has an actual chorus. Yeah. Um. I like. Wait. I wake like wake up? up. Which which one? Isn't that the da 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 right? Mm-hmm. That was, that was great. What's wrong with that one? <laughs> I think when we did our opening ranking, that was uh, last place. <laughs> wow. Not, Why, though? I'm curious. I What's think, wrong with it? I think a lot of it has to do with the 15th anniversary tie-in with those ridiculous gaudy outfits the Straw Hats are in. And the... Uh, yeah, the yeah, weird weird uh, interruption of Blackbeard and Luffy having a conversation. I th- yeah, and I think the the lyrics are really hokey. I think that song like grew on me, but yeah, it's still ranked really low for me. Ah, I'm surprised I gave super. So I think I think because superpowers has better visuals than wake up and weekend. I think that's oh, why that song sucks so bad. It does. Like, it does. I I actually really like uh uh can't remember the name of it. Wake up, right? Wake up. I like that song a lot. And I thought the you know fifty I thought it was fun you know it's 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 very fan servicey, but I actually liked the dress rosa visuals as well. Um, and I don't know it, it, it's wow I'll have to do like an official ranking at some point and like mm-hmm. really see where these fall because bottom I think oh boy superpowers that might be. The, yeah, the, that my might problem be with superpowers cool. too was when I was in Japan and I was in like a one piece uh, cafe 
if you ever go to like mm. anime theme cafes in Japan, oftentimes the the video slash music they play in there, it's just an endless mm. loop of an opening and a promo. Like when I was in the Yu mm. Hakusho Cafe, it was a promo for the Blu-ray and then the opening Smile Bomb again and again yeah. and again and again, which I didn't <laughs> mind because Smile Bomb is sure. one of my favorite openings. But I'm in the One Piece yeah. one. It's the awesome 20th anniversary promo showing all the arcs and the timeline. And then it was superpowers. Mm. <laughs> so. Okay. I would, yeah, that'd be pretty bad. And just to think, uh, like, over the top would be after that. I'm like, man, if I was just, if I was in a cafe and over the top was playing, I'd be amped. I'd be amped to eat my, yeah. my Tony Tony Chopper uh, antler fries. <laughs> you would slam the plate down when you're finished, shatter into pieces. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Break the break the cutlery in half. Yeah, absolutely. Now, do is there a topic? Doesn't have to be from Twitter, just in general. Uh, but you know, actually, Steve is this is his first time on. Is there a topic or question that you want to bring up or ask? Uh, in general, if not, don't worry. There about are it. some good Twitter but, questions, but I think those are a good like uh, end of the end of the episode lightning round stuff we could do. Here's, oh, okay. here's a topic I feel like I, 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 you want me to talk about this. So I think it, now's the time. <laughs> yeah. We got to talk about remembering commercials from the 90s. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're, we got to dive into fucking 90s commercials. So, and, you know, let's, let's go to the, let's look at the guy who cares about this the least. Jay, what are some of your favorite 90s commercials before Steve and I quote the entire blow pop. Uh, right, commercial. right. Uh, I forget what it was for. I think it was a gum, but Aaron Paul was in a commercial, right? Uh, for for corn pops. I only remember his corn pops one. Yeah. Uh, I think it was for there was a juicy gum one. Fruit? Like maybe it, quote it. What's the what's the? Uh, I, I I don't remember what was said, but it was like he was like I think in an interview or something, and like. He really wants the juicy fruit that's in the interviewer's like shirt pocket, the dress shirt pocket, and then the shirt oh. just like flies off of him because he like I guess like telekinetically <laughs> like wants to go. Okay. Uh. Uh. Yeah, I remember that. Uh. You know what might be a fun thing? Go ahead. Oh no! Finish. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty much the commercial. Oh, that's okay. So, so I, first I was gonna say, gotta have my pops. That's the Aaron Paul commercial I remember. For corn pops, the one you're thinking of, Steve, right? Yeah, well, I just remember that was like their catchphrase. I, I remember him doing an interview talking about him doing corn pops commercials, but I, I you don't you don't actually remember the commercial? I, no, I just remember just blonde kid just saying, "I gotta have my pops." <laughs> mm, gotcha. All right, here's a, here's a game we could play. Just do a quote and see if the other two can name the commercial. I'll start. This is one I've saw so many times. And it's the quote is I love him so much, I'll leave her a tip. Do you recognize that? That sounds familiar. Uh oh, yeah. Steve, what is it? I, I no, I don't I don't know yet, but that is that's triggering Steve, my memory for sure. It's tickling the brain. Okay. I love him so much, I'll leave her the tip. Boom 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 boom. That's how the music goes after that, because he flips a coin into the uh okay if you're not if you can't remember it is a reese's puffs commercial i, I was gonna say, say i'm like it's definitely a food ah. <laughs> and it's yeah, yeah 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 basically the commercial is like uh my sister works at as at this uh fucking what is it, like a diner or something and then um uh that's the tagline of his i love him so much i'll leave her a tip uh i just for some reason, that one stuck with me. Was it? Was Steve. it? Was it the two thousands that had like the rapping Reese's Puffs commercial with the Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I yeah, believe I so. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because I cannot say Reese's Puffs normally like a human being. I always say Reese's <laughs> Puffs, Reese's Puffs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you remember the? I think it was like a Pirates of the Caribbean tie-in where they did like two all beef patty special sauce lettuce cheese like you know for a uh, fucking Big Macs like. Do you remember this commercial at all? I I, I was expecting like a, something more piratey, like our. <laughs> no, they had it was like a rap, and they had it over like like pirate ships. I don't know. It was, it was weird. And the but... same shot of Jack Sparrow neither... coming into the dock on the uh, on the <laughs> mast. <laughs> I'm gonna make an AMV 
a, a Pirates of the Caribbean AMV. Do you remember when one? some AMVs were just animated GIFs? <laughs> they were just a slide. People like thought like, oh, this is how you make an AMV. You just make a slideshow of GIFs. Like, no, no, no. Nice, uh, nice try. Steve, what, do a quote. Do a quote from a commercial. We'll see if we can name it. There's one that's popping in my head, but I feel like if I say too much, you'll know what it is. I know it's. Well, it, here's the start of it. It says, "Hey, all kids, come gather around." Do you know this one? Um, Jared? no. Is this the start of a song or a yes. rap? Yeah, it is a jingle. Hey, all kids, come gather around. Do the next part. I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting the lyrics right now. It's, "Hey, now kids, come gather around. See what just blanked into town." Because if I say the verb, you're gonna guess it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it. Do you know it, no. Jay? All right. What is it? What is it? I'll 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 I'll, I'll say the full thing now. And if you if you don't guess yeah, it, you're a lost yeah. cause. Hey now, okay. kids, come gather round. See what just skipped into town. Skipped into town? Is this for like skip bow or something? No, it's skip it. Skip it. Skip it. Wait, what the fuck? Skip wait. it. Oh, wait, that's a, wait, that's a the toy, right? Bow. Like you like tie around your ankle or whatever, and like yeah. And the very best thing of all, there's a counter on this ball. So try to get your very best score. No, 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 no. I, I was thinking of Skip It, Steve. For some reason, I said Skip Bow, which is a card game. I'm looking at. You know, it's, yeah, I no, no. I was thinking of Skip It. Yeah, the thing you jump the ball, right? You yeah. jump over it. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just attach yeah. your leg, and then just like it, you know, it circles around. You just gotta like step over it. That was like every okay, Steve, Nick, every Nickelodeon find the commercial, commercial break. right now. <laughs> find, oh, it was on Nickelodeon. Maybe yeah, I didn't have cable at the time. Maybe because okay. like this is like well, very early '90s, and I think like it lasted till maybe like you know the late '90s. But it was like I would always see it on Nickelodeon for sure. Well, find it, find it now while Jay thinks <laughs> the video. Of, of yeah, I got you. Quote. Yeah, yeah. You got one, Jay, or you're just like, uh, I don't know. the thing is the ones I know are like. They're like the name of the product. Is the, it's like jingles with using the name of the product, and that's the only line I remember. <laughs> do a blank. Do a, use do a blank like Steve did. Uh, hold on. Let's watch this uh, skip it commercial real quick. Oh, right, yes, right. That's, I remember the skip it, skip it. That yeah, yeah. shit. Man. Okay. Well, listen. Also, Steve, you were not selling this. You were just. Hey now, kids, come into town. Like, like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you're like, was, hey now, kids, come uh, into town. I was shattering like, yeah, it okay. for you. <laughs> hey now, kids, I'm, I'm going to do Steve <laughs> Yurko reads of like fa- famous uh, jingles. Uh, to all of Beef Patty's <laughs> special sauce list, she's, yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm very timid about trying to act or sing, <laughs> uh, perform uh, in any uh, shape or form. Yeah. <laughs> uh, J- does Jay have a skip comp- it? Skip <laughs> it. Do <laughs> up, <laughs> dip, shoe up, bop. Hey, the very best yeah, thing day. of all is counter on Yo. this this ball. <laughs> the very best thing of all <laughs> is the counter on this <laughs> the ball. I want a man. R.I.P. Orson Welles gone too soon to do a skip it commercial. <laughs> the very best thing about this. Or what about wait, what is the line? <laughs> the very best thing about it all? Or what about the what the fuck is the line? Because <laughs> uh, the very best thing of all, there's a counter on this ball. Let's try to get your the very best, best thing of all. There's a counter on this ball. <laughs> yes. Right. Right. Let, let me try this in one and oh god, I one. <laughs> Two. No. One one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Confound it! <laughs> That's it. I quit. <laughs> Damage to hell. Uh, Jay, Jay, commercial. Uh, quote. Uh, okay. <laughs> I the I feel like almost every line of this commercial kind of gives it away. But the very first line of the commercial is, uh, "They look like babies. Baby born, baby uh, born. Baby bottle pop. Baby, is it baby yes, bottle it pop? Uh, if if you oh, remember yeah, yeah. the commercial, it's like it's like these like I guess they're in a diner or something but these uh kids yes. are like they look like babies and they go into the song of baby bottle pop baby bottle, baby bottle pop. pop baby bottle pop like, yeah this yeah, is yeah, gonna yeah. be one of the ones i was gonna drop on you oh on you really guys, yeah so. like uh, i don't know if you remember the <laughs> part of the song was like lick it dip it and shake it which <laughs> it's very and lick it again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very you know, strange speaking 
Speaking of Inuyasha, I could swear that the guy trying to pitch you on Baby Bottle Pop at the end, I was like, that sounds like Richard Ian Cox. That sounds like Inuyasha. (laughs) (laughs) It could have been. (laughs) Ah, Kagome, Uh, these Baby Bottle Pops are available in stores. (laughs) (laughs) Kagome! (laughs) Lick it again! Uh, I... What are some commercial... Like, for me, like, if I I, I ever count one... (laughs) Two, three. A three. I have to go. Sorry. A three because of uh, Tootsie Roll Pop. Any any other like commercial things that just infected? I mean, I definitely vocabulary? tried to test that. I was like, can I can I do this in one, two, three? And I definitely hurt my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! One, two, three. <laughs> 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 And I, I found a list on like BuzzFeed that I'm just going through right now, and a lot of these are like, oh man, these are top tier. I should talk about the Blow Pops commercial though, because that is forever yes, ruined yes. me. You yeah. Know? Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, there's a Blow Pop commercial on Steve. Walk us through it. Grape, strawberry, sour <laughs> apple, watermelon. Ta-da! Was it? It's like and then there was there was cherry too. I forget how the rest of it goes. But then of course it. But ends. that's a, but, but that, you got the classic ending where uh, that's a blow. That's a blow pop. Say from charms. What? What? Cut! 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 cut. Oh man, that you know. Wait, that oh, one, they're right, like Jay? on a film set, right? Like that's. Uh... Yes. Oh, yeah, they're on a film yeah. set, and they go, "That's a blow pop." Say from charms. What? <laughs> Cut, cut. Uh, oh, man. At some point, like, and I can't believe we haven't done this yet. Because Anne Maria and I used to do this all the time. Just, we need to pull up, like, 2000s era commercials and just watch them. Because they have tons of these on YouTube. That is one have of you the... ever watched that, these? Yeah, it's one of the best things you could do when you're just hanging out and you don't know what to watch, yeah. or what to do with yourselves. Put on a compilation of commercials. You will have a good it is, time. <laughs> it is crazy what you remember. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, it's like, oh my God, as soon as it goes, I know the whole thing verbatim because capitalism, right? It's just drilled into my mind through repeated rep- repetition, repetition, repetition. Um, and also, it's, it can also be fun if you watch stuff from before you were like born and just watch weird commercials, right? Like, or just, like, 80s, 70s, you know, like, commercials. That can also be fun in its own way. Just Then it's all new stuff, and it's just, like, watching goofy old... I, I mean, you're... Right. Before, before we had uh, Fruity Pebbles, we had... Oh, what you doing there, Fred? I'm having a cigarette, Bron. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, are you guys familiar with... Uh, I'm sure you guys are. The, the Pepsi Man commercials from overseas. Pepsi Man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I don't think I ever saw a Pepsi Man commercial. Like as it's, it, maybe that was just geared towards like older audiences. Like I don't because I just watched like Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, like crazy as a kid. Well, Pepsi Man was a, it was it was overseas. Oh, okay. That would yeah. Explain. I saw. I saw like, I'm from, aware I mean, of Pepsi I, Man. I, saw, cause I had a I had a, like a like a Korean VHS rental store near me growing up. So I that's how I would see. <laughs> Those commercials, they just be like ads on these VHSs. Mm. Oh man, that's kind of ads on VHSs were kind of a bonus, right? Like for me, I had uh, for the longest time, uh, I had this cop VHS t- recording of the rescuers on TV, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I didn't own the rescuers uh, proper, but I would watch this recording of it, and the to- it had so many good toy commercials on it. That that was like part of the experience. I like loved watching the commercials. In like it, it, I don't know. It became part of it for me. Whereas when I watched the watch it now, I, mean, I own it now on like DVD or whatever. But like when the thing should go to commercial break, I'm like, oh, this is weird. Like it just jumps to the next scene. There isn't like a fucking Lego commercial right after this, or uh, you know. Yeah, I just remember Lego that was that was like a hassle back in the day when you tr- would try to re- record a show off your vcr and if you're home you might mm-hmm. want to like ru- like run over to the vcr and pause it at the right time so when catch the commercial break or sometimes i think one of my my last vcr if i was watching something that had commercials my my vcr like knew when to fast forward through commercials 
It was, oh, like, it was damn, Mr. Fancy over yeah, here. So it was late, okay. late, late, great VCR technology. It's just funny how back then, no, you don't want commercials on record stuff. Also because VHSs could barely hold shit. So there's only so much room on them. But now it's like, that's yeah. like a, it's a treasure trove. Like you would love to like, oh yes, this, it's like these old cartoons I recorded have the commercials. And that's what I'm saying. Like mm-hmm. I loved those. Like, uh, did you guys have a rewind car? Rewind car? Rewind. Oh, that's separate from a, is, is that the separate device it's, from a VCR that just rewinds the tape? It's a device. It's a, it's a device that looks like a car. You put the VHS tape in it, you close it and it rewinds the tape for you. Oh Neither of you had, had no! I never had one, but I, I ha- definitely knew kids around the neighborhood that had this. It's like a red. It's a little red car, uh, right? Uh, well, there's there. We had like one or two of them. Just I think we probably just got it at like a garage sale. But yeah, it like it. It looked like this. I'm putting it in the Discord chat. It looked like this, and oh, you, wow. uh, you would pop it open, put a VHS tape in it, close it, and it would just, it would just rewind it super fast. It made rewinding fun, man. <laughs> And then you could like, I don't know. That's also a toy you could play with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it's just funny. It's just some weird, a weird little gadget I grew up with. But whenever I ask people, like, did you ever wind car? They're like, what the fuck's a rewind car? I'm like, oh, I think I it, guess that was just a weird, weird thing we had. I remember coming across one. I forget if my family owned it or maybe like a grandparent. But I, mm. I remember the device. But it wasn't. It was just like a, like a device. It looked like, you know, like it looked like a big, like old, like iMac from the late 2000s something like that it didn't look what like a, a waste could have been it could have looked like a it car looked like a car <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh I, I, just going back to commercials real quick because just going through this list reminded me like crossfire that's a banger you guys remember crossfire oh hell yeah yeah crossfire right. okay, how about yeah. a pow perfection <laughs> what what does he say uh perf- make the right connection yeah perfection is a race to be- beat the clock if you're not quick wow <laughs> wow <laughs> pop goes perfection Milton bradley yeah, yeah amory's like why the fuck probably like, why the fuck is he saying perfection in the other room because uh, i'm as soon as, and as soon as i walk out I'll, I'll be like if she can hear me right now i'll be like guess who i was on the podcast with why would I, and she'd probably be able to guess ah Steve <laughs> yeah well, I got another uh, I got another board game one that uh yeah 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 because that's been like running through my head too mm-hmm. uh, no that's not it that's just describing it well what was one uh the operation one like was coming to my head uh is it water in the mm. knee operation a Charlie horse it's true <laughs> operation <laughs> I'm the doctor for you <laughs> I love the we like per, like the exact enunciation you have to do or, or emphasis right like for that commercial yeah if you watch the commercial you got to do it exactly you know pow <laughs> yeah yeah you got to you got to capture it or You're absolutely capturing it it does anyone remember it's a brainy action a crazy contraption the phone is catching <laughs> its mouse trap mouse trap <laughs> yeah any of you remember the thirteen dead and drive commercial no no. Uh, I might have linked this to people before, but it had like these Jim Henson last like Muppets that were really kind of creepy. And if you're not familiar with the game, like it's like death traps in a mansion. And so it'd be like, lights up for the hairdresser. Ah! And like the chandelier would fall on like a character or whatever. You know, I'll link it in the, well, you know, after this, we're just going to go, wa- we're going to watch <laughs> a couple of these. Like, <laughs> well, those are like, like, those were the, the super cool board games you wanted to own, but you didn't. And then like, you realize like if you did, like it, you would tie yourself out just setting everything up. <laughs> Thirteen Dead and Drive, I actually did own, and I loved it. It was so fun. It was actually as fun as the commercial made it look. Here, you know, just watch okay. this because we because yeah, yeah. Jay edits this. Oh, God. Let's just watch this real quick. Oh, God, these puppets. God, this is just a playset. It was really fun. Like something I've kind of I think I mentioned before. It it surprises me I didn't get into board games earlier as an adult considering how much i loved them as a kid i just wasn't aware mm-hmm. that like designer board games for adults was a thing but like looking back on my love for like even slightly more intricate kids board games it's like it absolutely makes sense so this game 13 dead and drive for those of you who aren't aware like you're in a mansion and it's like the way better version of clue or something where uh you're tr- like whoever's picture is on the mantle i think you have to like try to kill them by moving them onto like a death trap so there was like 
There was a thing where you could double a knight on one of them. You could you know, trip the ladder, drop a chandelier, fling them down the stairs, all of these death traps. Uh, and you were trying to, like, you know, make it so that you were the one who didn't die or something like that. I forget the exact rules, but uh, had great play value on its own. And But uh, it was also just a very fun little board game. That is and great commercial. See you later, chef. Oh, man. That is way more so fun good. than Clue. Because thinking back, yeah. I don't think I ever understood how to play the Clue board, the Clue board game. <laughs> I think it was like, you just walk around and enter a room. It's like, okay, I think I'll take a guess now. <laughs> and then you look uh, at the cards. See, I, no. It's funny. Uh, I actually played Clue very recently in Korea, actually. Because uh, turns out I have... Um, oh, what are what are we related? How are we related? I think we're second cousins. My... It would be... Or wait. My mom's sisters kids kid i don't know what that <laughs> technically a cousin uh, and uh, second right? cousin no 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 because it's cousin's mutual friend kid. my my mom's sister's cousin's kid is your i believe it's your isn't that your second cousin i think that's your second cousin. whatever i think so i don't know people will correct me in the comments i'm sure but um Turns out, like as we were we were visiting, you know, family and a lot of them I had not met before. Uh, this little kid, he's in like el- uh, early elementary school, but he's like, as he's into board games, I'm into now, right? Like he had like a board game magazine and it had, it had like all these like games that I play, like Dixit and like stuff. I was like, damn, like this this kid rules. And then we actually played because he had it, and I, I think he he had not played it before. He had a game of Clue, and he was so excited to play it. I was like, sure, let's play Clue, even with like kind of like a language barrier. It was... Oh, no, no, no. His Eng- their English was actually pretty good, but it was really charming. Like, I, it was a very good memory of, like, playing Clue with this relative that... It, it almost felt like having, like, a Aww. nephew, right? Because I don't have any mm-hmm. nephews. But I was like, wow, like, uh, I... Uh, we, we don't speak the same language. I mean, I speak very little Korean, so it was like... We could kind of communicate, but we could communicate enough where we could play this game together. Uh, but Clue is basically just a logic puzzle. It's like you look at the cards you have and go, okay, well, Colonel Mustard's in my hand. That means he can't be the killer, right? Because it, it's whatever's in the in the envelope. And then you're, like, trading information with other people. Like, oh, like, what do you have? Oh, it's not the lead pipe? Okay, and then you're – and then you can kind of bluff guesses and things like that. It's that mm-hmm. kind of game. Yeah. I don't know why I'm explaining the rules to Clue as if people... But Steve doesn't know, so I'm explaining it to you. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Now, now, you, yeah, now, yeah. now uh, I'm the same I'm level you as this young elementary school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was keeping you up at night, right? You were like, how do you play Clue? How do you play Clue? I thought, well, I thought finally watching the movie would answer my questions, and it just made things more confusing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great movie. Yeah, uh, I, I saw it for the first time last year, and it... It was a long time coming. Everyone's like, Steve has to see Clue. Steve has to see Clue. Finally watched it. I saw it for the first time in college, and it all I was also like, wow, this is just absurd. Mm -hmm. You've seen the Clue movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah. Some time ago. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Funnily enough, the podcast before this one, I was talking about the Clue books, which I loved. Uh, I'm not going to go into that again because that was literally the last episode, but those are great. Um, Clue rules, actually. Yeah. who would you be in Clue? <laughs> who would I play as? Who would you be? Yeah. Who, who would be the character? Like, who, well, who would I be and who I played as? It's, that's two very different questions. Okay. Let, you know what? Let, let, let's go around. Who did you play as and who would you be? I think for me the answer is both. But. Uh, can you guess mine? Because I feel like it's pretty Oh. Honest. Now, when we say who you played at, was it based off color or character? Color. <laughs> oh wait. Okay, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any yeah, chance? Yeah. Am I cool? There's a purple piece. I'm playing as that. Okay. Okay. Jay, did you play as a specific character? Uh, I think I did also play as Professor Plum, but uh, mm. um, I definitely did. <laughs> I definitely want to avoid playing as Mrs. Peacock because, as a kid, I had a fear or. I have a fear of peacocks, um, so I want to. I want. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, so, do you Let's never set foot? In, in, do you never set foot in Arcadia, you- dude? It was a night. Okay, so uh, my my last job, uh, as you guys know, I, I worked for uh, the the clothing, the design apparel, uh, Omona. 
Uh, oh yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Sarah, yeah, and so anytime, <laughs> and and uh, my boss uh, 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 was aware of my fear of peacocks, so <laughs> they would always advise, like, "Hey, just be careful when you come over here." Like there was a time we were eating at a at a diner, like uh, at, like just taking a lunch break, and then <laughs> there's like Jay, do you do you trust me? And I was like, "Yeah, why?" He's like, mm-hmm. "Then don't turn." around and i was like uh okay and i just kept eating and eventually like i like i like you know we when we left and i are on my right window right because there's a window behind me because we're at a corner of the restaurant and then there's a window on the right on the right i see a peacock start walking away and i was like oh my fucking god (laughs) i have two questions two questions for you one if you had seen it what would have happened? What would you have done? Uh, I would ask to sue, sit somewhere else, probably. <laughs> okay, so you wouldn't have like screamed or like no, run away. no, 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 no. Um, uh, I, usually my my yeah, like when when it comes to being approached by my f- like physical fears, it's more so like I'm just frozen like a deer in headlights kind of deal. <laughs> <laughs> Second, how did this? This is such. I'm just getting so much. I feel like I I feel like I've gotten so much good J lore, and then it's it's like I get more and more J lore. How did this happen? Why do you have a fear? Uh, of peacocks? Okay, okay. So I as much as I love birds, and I do think peacocks aesthetically are can be great. Uh, my my fear of peacocks came from in first grade, I believe, or it was first grade or kindergarten. I can't remember mm. one of those two because it was uh uh I don't I don't remember, but um. I was pretty young and we went on a field trip to a petting zoo and um you know we're all petting mm. the animals and blah 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 and uh there was a at the center a peacock cage we could all walk into and then the zoo guide was like oh let's all come in she's really friendly don't worry like come in and like don't just don't get too close you know and so we all walked in and you know be <laughs> unfortunate truth being the only asian kid in the class the kids like some classmates were like oh you don't get to go inside and they kept pushing me like shoving me and blocking the entrance and the teacher didn't know us at all so i couldn't go inside the, the peacock cage mm. and so they all saw the peacock and left and i was like oh i want to go in so now's my chance right so i ran in alone uh, to go look at the peacock mm. and then i guess those bullies were still behind so they closed the door locked it and then they took a stick and started poking the peacock like aggressively so the peacock went crazy oh, started no. screeching and it just like lunged at me and it was chasing me around the cage eventually the kids like the bullies ran away and i made my way out of the cage but the cage's door was left open so i don't know if the peacock left or not but i caught up with the teacher and then i tried to explain what happened to the teacher but the teacher was like ah, probably be like oh this asian kid has an overactive imagination it's like no like all the kids were here. Like, Jay, you were the only one that was left behind. Like, stop making up stories. Like, you know, we all went in together. Like, you're not supposed to go by yourself, blah, blah, blah. So I basically just got scolded. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, ever since then, I had a fear of peacocks. Damn. That wasn't as hilarious as I was hoping. Instead, it's just like, damn, fuck those kids. <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. That's, how comically evil of these stupid little kids to do that. Yeah. Uh, I, I In my mind, I'm like, well, I guess it's a... F- it's a sad story, but at the same time, like, I guess uh, if you ever see me near Peacock, I, you could get a kick of me just be like, like, like anytime, anytime I was in Pasadena or Arcadia or whatever, and I hear the Peacock call, I like flinch a little bit. <laughs> How's the call oh, go? My. <laughs> Do you want me to imitate it? <laughs> yeah, how does it's it like, go? Ah, ah, like, ah, ah, like something like that. <laughs> interesting yeah no oh man i can't make fun of you for it because it's, it's a sad memory <laughs> that's a tragic but story like, like fish he, fish i'll i won't stop making fun of you for fish that was my own blunder boys, yes but... uh the peacock was not that yeah. was out of my control so he i thought it was gonna be like oh uh my friend i lost the, <laughs> a bet, uh, like yeah, a bet. The bet and, and then uh the bet was i gotta go like ride a peacock and the peacock <laughs> threw me down a ditch or something i was like you know, I thought it was going to be something... Uh, Peacocks killed own. my grandma, yeah, right? Yeah, totally, totally, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> and I asked the peacock why they do it. They said the test by a pillsby. <laughs> <laughs> I was I just wanna, hoping... I want to pe- see a peacock with Sharingan patterns. Oh, on his, uh, feathers. feathers. <laughs> or, or, you know, even better, a, uh, it's a it's a sh- peacock with Sharingan 
and the feathers are all fish. Oh my god! That's like the Jay nightmare. <laughs> we should we should call we should call them Hawkeye Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> Surpass me, Jay. Oh my god! I was just hoping the story with you at the restaurant was just like a peacock walk up the table, it's like, "Hey, how's it going today? You enjoying your food? Oh my god. Is there anything we could get for you?" <laughs> Jay is like, I just want to. No, go, go ahead. Sorry. I would say, like, Jay is just, like, ready to explode, and this peacock is just trying to provide you excellent customer service. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to I was gonna tag on to you. You said Hawkeye peacock, but if we're going to go with the fish thing, walleye peacock. What? Walleye <laughs> peacock. I'm gonna, uh, so if this if this episode had a title, which they don't, the episode would be... I'm gonna... <laughs> or something, something along peacock. those lines. Uh, <laughs> walleye peacock the scariest shikibukai oh i'm sorry steve uh, w- warlord of the sea <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> i was like whenever i see the word nakama or anything i'm like steve would have a conniption right <laughs> just know i'm uh, just doing like the sideshow bob groan like <laughs> shikibukai is a cool word though what's wrong with it shikibukai but then it's like, then you have to explain what it means. <laughs> no, you don't. People who watch One yeah, Piece I mean, know. The, the yeah, uh, that's, it, it, it's too it, it's too insider term. I, I mean, the, the, that's why the Naruto I dub I, didn't say call the Akatsuki the Red Clouds or whatever. I think. Yeah, Steve. Well, that's Naruto. <laughs> that's not my game. I don't care. <laughs> I, I think with Naruto too, like that's so in like it it feels more like a Japanese show. Sure. sure. One Piece to well, me feels well, like a like a cartoon. Like it doesn't just feel like strictly anime. Like I would say that the Akatsuki is different because Shikibukai. At least there's like a translation, right? Like they are the seven warlords of the sea, right? Mm-hmm. Like whereas, and that's what they are. Whereas they're not literally like red cloud. It's like you know, uh, it makes a, it, it does make sense, I guess. Like it's more not because even in, in like figurative. In... In the Wano arc, um, the official translation goes with, like, the Akazaya Nine instead of, like, the Nine Red Scabbards. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think it's because they're in Wano. It's very Japanese-themed. It feels more appropriate right, here. Right, right. Uh, it's, I don't know. Uh, Your trans- <laughs> Well, thank God they kept that in Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> <laughs> Your shit. While we were just but. quoting things, people have no idea what we're talking about. Oh, everyone knows Sonic Adventure 2. Everyone knows Japanese Eggman <laughs> from Sonic No, Adventure like, 2. oh, it's uh, it's either the English Eggman says it, or they just didn't have a voice clip for him, so they just used the Japanese one. Which would happen in, in, the, in, like, the original Sonic Adventure. They didn't have, like, Ryan Drummond record Sonic yawning and stuff, so it would just be the Japanese actor yawning. Oh. Yeah, it was bizarre. Wow, going back, going way, going way back. Which which clue character did you think I played as? Um, um you were. Hold on. If it's if it's color association, you probably. It's not oh, color. Okay. It's not. It's not color. Okay, association. not by oh, color. Oh, you're Colonel Mustard. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say Colonel Mustard. Yeah, hell okay. yeah, Colonel Mustard, motherfucker. He's the best one. And bring Professor it back to Plum. One Piece. <laughs> just yeah. jumping all over the place here. <laughs> I, I I asked. I asked some friends a question recently. I'm like, all right, if they made like a One Piece theme clue game, like who's who? Ooh, oh, I love that. Okay, mm. uh, well, I'm, I, I'm, I gotta I'm dig up. See. I gotta dig up some answers too because there, someone made some really good puns. <laughs> so. Okay, well, I mean, just going off, you'd have to go off just color, right? Mainly. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't stick to that too much. It takes the fun out of it. Well, okay. Let's just, let's just do the classic that first, and then we'll do, and then then it can be anything goes, or like based off the character types. Like, what should, do you, what do you try to match profession? I'd yeah, say what, what, what's the rule personality. of personality. Personality. Like, I'd mm. say, I'd say, like, don't stick to like, like color too much because they'd be like, oh, so like Luffy's Miss Scarlet because. So red, here's the red. thing, though. I want to do both because I want to imagine what okay. the mass market version would be. And then I want to imagine what the actual fan version would be, right? So Luffy's red, right? It's what yellow, green. I'm literally writing these down. Well, Sanji's technically blue. Like Usopp's yellow. What? Yeah. Yeah. What Sanji's Sanji, blue? Sanji's color. Sanji's color is blue. Yeah. 
I could do this. Luffy Red. Uh, no, no, Zoro no, 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 Green. no, no. I'm talking about oh. if it was published in like America by Hasbro. They're not okay. going to make Sanji blue. They're going to make him yellow. No. Yeah. Yeah. Which Sanji's is good because yellow. someone made a great joke. He wouldn't be called Colonel Mustard. He'd be called like Colonel Dijon. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, he's got to be Colonel Mustard. <laughs> uh, Zoro's green. Frankie's blue. Well, it's like very male centric then. So, but Nico Robin, it could be purple, and I guess Nami's white. Oh yeah, Nami's white. The, the classic shirt. There you go. That's it. Right. And that's just going by color. But that's going I purely think... off color. But now personality. Let's go into personalities because I miss. Scar- I mean, it can be any character. Yes. Well, I, I'd say like keep it within like the main cast. But oh, interesting. And you know what's funny is I have extra. <laughs> character information because the books give them very distinct personalities ah. so, is it very similar to the movie or is it very different it's very different from the movie uh hmm. so my answers might be different from your answers if you are you basing it off the movie i i think that's the most i know of clue or yeah do movie. that then i'll do i'm gonna name base them off the books and we have to pick from the straw this is so it's I, I I always say who I don't care if people are interested, but this is I love how specific this is. Like one piece characters is clue. Brooke is Mr. Body. Ha <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> Alright. He's the he he's the corpse. <laughs> uh I I'm gonna put like Zoro as Mr. Green and Sanji as Colonel Mustard. Okay, okay. Alright. Um I'm trying to think of my quotes because you gotta use Robin and Nami for sure. Right. And I'm just trying to think like who works I better. think Nami works better I as the Scarlet. Yeah. Think so? Yeah. As a character, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I actually think what I came up with for, like, color, just, we're just going off color. Wouldn't mm. this be it, right? Luffy Red, Sanji Yellow, Zoro Green, Frankie Blue, Robin Purple, Nami White. That'd be it. Yeah, if you want to do, like, if you want to do the safe. Yeah, that's you know, the safe Hasbro colors. version. But yes. then, if I'm going off the characters, Nami is Miss Scarlet. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Um, let's see. We got Colonel Mustard, Mr. Green, Mrs. Peacock, Professor Plum, Mrs. White. Now, what's interesting is, do you want me to just go through what their personalities like are in the books? Are you interested sure. at all? It's very interesting. Yeah. So, like in the, and it's so funny because so whenever I play the game, and not that I play the game often, but I still associate the personalities from the books. Uh, Miss Scarlet is like the seductress, very typical, you know. Oh, she's like the uh, femme fatale, sexy. Colonel Mustard is like a military like duelist, like he's always like, "I'll challenge you to a duel," like you know, slap you with a glove, like honor, that sort of thing. Mister Green is like the money grubbing, just like you know, asshole. He just wants money. Mrs. Peacock is very proper and all about manners. Professor Plum is very forgetful, and then Mrs. White is. <laughs> like hates all the other ones she's like the maid who like uh like talks shit about them behind their backs so that's the personalities from the books um huh. now, yeah that's so that i'm gonna go off of that you guys can go off of whatever you want um but that what the book personalities definitely have like a uh Oh god, Mrs. White, White Brook for the basic one. <laughs> that could work too, but I also like it. him as the body is pretty funny. I don't know. You guys have any thoughts? Uh... I'm. Try- I'm I am. I. was waiting for you to finish and see. Like, hmm. Like I like Nami as as Miss Scarlet. So would that make it? Would that make Robin Miss Peacock? I feel like Probably. she's more fun loving. I mean. If- yeah, Hancock, Miss Hancock. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I think th- I think that would be really good. It's hard, right? Because I'm trying to think. They have like Scooby Doo Clue, right? Do th- are those also just based off color? It must be. Yeah, like I know, like they they've done like Simpsons, Family Guy. So why not do one for One Piece? But like, actually, like, don't care about like main characters like who you're trying to sell by putting on the box just think of best personalities hmm. wait, wait 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 wait, wait. i'm looking up scooby-doo clue 
They're not based off color at all. That's so interesting. Look at this. Shaggy's purple. They dress up as the characters. That's great, cool. actually. Okay. Like, Fred yeah. is Mr. Green. Daphne's Miss Scarlet. They just have a maid because they couldn't think of, like, another yeah, character. They, they, should, they should have just dressed uh, up the mystery could, van. They could just made Scrappy-Doo. Yeah, Scrappy-Doo, <laughs> at least, or Scooby-Dumb. Uh, but that's actually great. That Okay, then, then we don't have to go by color at all. That's awesome. Then, hmm, Professor, I'm going to try to discard the personalities and just go by archetypes then, like... Who, okay. Who would be so fun? Professor Plum is kind of like the bookwormy. Then that's gonna be uh, Robin, right? Yeah. 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 I see that. Yeah. Nico Robin is Professor Plum. Uh. uh I still kind of like Sanji's Colonel Mustard. But no, he would look better though as Mister Green, right? In a suit. Probably. That's more his aesthetic. Yeah. Who Who do you think of when you think of, like old timey like? Hunter, like, pith hat, like, Colonel Mustard, like a military man. Uh, probably be a movie Don, Don Creed. Style, right? <laughs> okay, we're, we're literally doing any I know, I know, I know, yeah, yeah. Anything yeah. goes, um, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't, I know, like, uh, going back to Reverend, Reverend Green, just because of like, I'm thinking about the profession uh, of like, just like you know, yeah, he's conniving. Well, your personality was yeah, conniving, but also like he's like a priest, right? I I think about the time where Usopp dressed up in Thriller Bark of like with all the like oh, anti spirit gear. That's pretty funny. So like a kind of like a yeah. like a like a really spooked out version of Mr. of Reverend Green. Yeah, no, that 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 could work. Uh, Usopp has to be a character. Yeah, Hold on, but yes. where's like, Luffy? He's... Actually, Luffy might have to be Colonel Mustard, right? Because he has to be in it. Yeah, I, I think that would be fun to see <laughs> Luffy. Uh, <laughs> just like uh, instead of being like you know uh, this like serious colonel, just like this goofy, geared up guy just charging in, very, very true right, to his personality. Right. Now we do have three female characters. Oh, so Carrot, Carrot could be one of them, right, Steve? Sure. Yay! <laughs> I don't have I don't have I don't have problems with carrot. Oh really? I don't just, uh, <laughs> no, it's just more like people are like oh, carrot's gonna join the crew, and I'm like whoa, whoa please, whoa, whoa, whoa. I want her to. <laughs> Who said? I think she's great. I like her, but when people are just like oh, it's it it, it it's like a it's fact. definitive. I'm like, whoa, yeah, whoa. that I'm just I'm just wishful thinking. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm like take it easy, take it easy here. We don't know that. Who else do we... Uh... You know, you know. I actually think this would be a pretty fun batch. If we, because if I have to choose between is Usopp or Sanji going to be it, I'd rather have Sanji. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, <laughs> and like, if we're going to go off no colors match, I actually kind of like this. Nami's Miss Scarlet, Luffy's Mustard, Sanji's Mr. Green, Robin is Mrs. Peacock, Zoro, Professor Plum, I want to see him in glasses, and uh, Carrot is Mrs. White. That could be fun. Very or, interesting. Or here. fuck it, put put Brooke in like a maid outfit. White. <laughs> I think Mrs. White is the least I, important. Yeah, and honestly, I can see I could see Carrot dressing up like as a French maid uh, to the delight of many people, including <laughs> like I. <laughs> I see it. I think it fits. Yeah. Honestly, and to include and like. For a game like this, like I think it'd be cute for like the the rest of the Straw Hats to be part of like the instruction booklet. Like Usopp's the one telling everyone, like, okay, you guys are going in to figure out what's mm. going on because I'm too scared to go in. <laughs> so Usopp could, or like you know, one of them is the detective or something that you give the answer to, right? right? Yeah, like Frankie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's a lot of things you could do, or like. Oh my God! It's like the rooms are the sh- are the rooms in the uh, Thousand Sunny. Right, kitchen. The ah, we're designing. Oh my god, we're designing One Piece clue. And then what are the? Okay. <laughs> oh my god, this podcast is gonna be forever. But I don't care. <laughs> what are the weapons? What are the six weapons? A uh, cola barrel, <laughs> Sabo's <Just>, lead <laughs> pipe. <laughs> <laughs> we got Zoro's swords, right? Zoro swords. That's gotta be one. Yeah. Yes. Um, Zoro's swords is one. Uh, Sanji's cooking knife. He barely uses that though. Uh, we also already have, but we have. A, we also have, we already have a cutting thing. 
Uh, oh, oh, what are, uh, Wait, cho- oh, Chopper's like not... uh, like a, a mushroom right. from Chopper's like like office. Chopper's poison. Chopper's poison. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. It's got I, got, the, I gotta look up. Got uh, the I gotta look mark. up the I think okay, I think it'd, like, be, it'd be ridiculous, but uh, I think Frankie's cola barrel <laughs> would be a fun one. Just like they were killed with like okay. a so, bashed in the head with cola. <laughs> well, because the weapons are revolver, dagger, lead pipe, rope, candlestick, and wrench. So we got, so and we don't we have, have to go off of those. Just if if there are no. like iconic weapons, is there an iconic mm-hmm. gun? Not really. The closest would be like a, like Usopp's slingshot. Oh no no oh, oh, no, no that's it, oh that's absolutely wait, one. But what about yeah, uh, Usopp's slingshot? Yeah. A dial, like an impact dial. Mm, okay, I, I like that. But I kind of want to go for ones that are character specific. Mm, and okay, that okay. More fun. Swords, poison, slingshot, absolutely one of them. Yeah, of course. Uh, There's okay, so we're halfway through. Halfway already, so through, what's and got? the listeners, if you did, have already tuned out at this point, but I don't care. This is so <laughs> fun. Okay, uh, one. What are one piece? What are some other one piece weapons? Uh, you know, I'm. What, I, what, I, are, I actually are, like Sabo's lead pipe. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put that in there. <laughs> that, that. I mean, that. The, that is a very iconic. Uh, I know. Okay, since we like we have Zoro's sword, what about like Sanji's like frying pan or something? Mm, or that too no, no, no. I think that's thematic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Sanji's frying pan, Nami's uh, what do you call it? Climb, 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 climb attacked. <laughs> Who could have possibly used Nami's climb attack <laughs> to murder <laughs> someone? But I, I think because do no none of the other straw hats have any weapons, right? No, not particularly. I mean, Frankie right. is a weapon, but um... Frankie is a weapon. Frankie weapon. himself is the sixth weapon. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, Jimbei's weapons are his fists. Yeah, <laughs> this is, I think that's it. Swords, poison, slingshot, lead pipe, frying pan, climb attack. We'll stop there because we're gonna Jesus. now we're going off the rails. Like this could be its own. We could go on an episode. Uh, Don't get me started on my ideas for a One Piece theme park. <laughs> oh, God. No, no, Steve, we're going to have you back on. Don't worry. Like, uh, this is Jay's second time. Oh, thanks. Steve, you're definitely going to come on again at some point. Like, uh, mm-hmm. oh, but what about the, you know, I mean, we did do all the characters. We could come up with the rooms in the Thousand Zones. Okay, hold on. <laughs> let's finish. Well, that is just like, let's finish you just off open on up that. volume 45. Oh shit! Do they? Okay, is, are there enough rooms for that? How many rooms do we need in Clue? How many rooms do you need in Clue? You need. There's like the entrance. There are, I believe, nine rooms. Yeah, including the entrance right. is one of them. I got so you have volume like, forty-five yeah, handy. Yeah. You've got like the kitchen, and if we want to include like the characters who aren't playable, then it's like Frankie's. Does he have a laboratory? He's got Frankie's vehicle uh, room. Like his... Yeah, like that's okay. probably where Frankie's vehicle stuff. room. Chopper has a laboratory then. Yeah, like a doctor's office. Yeah. Chopper has like his doctor's office. Yeah. Okay, Chopper's doctor's oh, office. Um, and then uh, are we missing any straw hats? Oh, Brooke, I guess. Uh, uh, Nami. Well, it's not like Nami's like orange tree garden. Nami's or gro- orchard or whatever yeah. yeah okay Zoro's weight room yeah uh, kitchen obviously what, the, would the lookout be one like the on the top of the mast well, um, maybe it's not really a room mm-hmm. I guess the grass deck is just like the in between we could use yeah that wouldn't be a room it's gotta be an enclosed basically you have to go inside it right mm-hmm. oh I guess the orchard wouldn't really work then uh it's not really a, a room because we have kitchen vehicle room dining doctor's room. office weight room oh the dining room yeah dining room yeah dining room any other classic uh, rooms you mentioned zoro's weight room mm-hmm. um the aquarium bar oh aquarium bar sure uh does robin have a library or something um oh there's i don't know if Maybe that's in the women's chambers. Let me check. Women's chambers, its own room. Okay, women's chamber. Does men? Did the yeah. men's chamber? Is that another room? Men, yeah. Men have their own room. One more room then. One yeah, men's chambers. Yeah, it's kitchen. But, like that's not as interesting. We could do something like. Well, we just also uh, doesn't have to be perfect. 
Uh, kitchen, yeah. vehicle room, doctor's office, weight room, dining room, aquarium bar, women's chamber, management chamber. And then the final one could just be like, if it's the entrance, it's like the du- like the deck or something like that. And that's one piece clue. I mean, we yeah. could refine it, but that's pretty good right there. I think that's that. That's a good first draft. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, shit. Uh, I think we could keep going, but we should probably wrap up. But thank you, Steve, for being on. Uh, this oh, thanks for having we, me on, guys. We covered a lot of sh- a lot of ground here. It was a very Steve. It felt like a very Steve episode in a good way. Like we talked about One Piece, talked about commercials, talked about all sorts of shit. So. That's what I'd say, but like Jay had like character arcs. Yeah, this. oh yeah, it was like it punctuated with Jay interludes. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so Steve, where can people find you? You can find me at steveyurko.com and on Twitter and Instagram, Steve Yurko. And Jay, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter or Instagram at Jay Perrier. All right. Thank you, boys. Uh, we'll get started on making One Piece Clue right after this. And uh, thanks for being on. Thanks for having us. Later.